What's up Rebels fans, this is Andy from StarWars.com here at Lucasfilm Headquarters. This week we saw the return of Clone Wars fan favorite Hondo Onaka and Brothers of the Broken Horn. And lucky for you, I'm here to take you behind the scenes with cast and crew. This is Rebels Recon. <laughs> Left alone to cleaning duty, Chopper and Ezra investigate a distress call from Vizago's ship, but a new face has taken over the helm. I am Hondo Onaka, proud owner of this fine but currently inoperative vessel. Hondo attempts to recruit Ezra as his partner, but when the deal goes awry, Chopper steps in to save the day. Back on the Broken Horn, Ezra discovers Vizago held captive and assists him in getting his ship back, only to have the ghost crew discover what he was really up to during his chores. I used to be like Hondo, out for myself and alone, but that's not who I am anymore. With the return of Hondo this week, we're getting a glimpse into the underground occupants found in Rebels. I sat down with Dave and Pablo to talk about this dark and seedy corner of the galaxy and what it was like bringing our favorite pirate back to life. Check it out. Hondo returns in Brothers of the Broken Horn. Can you give us any hints as to what he's been up to since we last saw him in the Clone Wars? We see that he doesn't have a ship, he doesn't have a crew, he doesn't have a base. So I think times have been tough for Hondo. Hondo was a huge profiteer in the Clone War. I always imagined building him up by the end of it, he had so much wealth and he was the happiest he's ever been. And then at a certain point, he loses it all. When we find Hondo in Rebels, he's pretty much on his own. He's still trying to live out the life of the Pirate King that he imagines himself to be. It's great having Jim back to play Hondo because you know, I love Hondo as a character. I am rich! And dead. One of the things I wanted to explore, and it was there in different levels in the script, is that you get the feeling that Hondo really, really felt Obi-Wan was his friend. For as much as they double dealed Obi-Wan and, and he messed with them and he tried to kill some Padawans once, mm -hmm. but Hondo's like, ah, but that was, you know, I was just kidding. It wasn't <laughs> real. He misses the Jedi because of the excitement they brought to his life. He's a Jedi sympathist. Why do you think it's important to explore the seedy side of the Star Wars universe? I think, you know, Shades of Grey in terms of Star Wars, like the morality of the characters is always fascinating. People were attracted to Han because he wasn't a clear-cut good guy. With the underworld, you can be more extreme and exaggerated and you know, there's always this quirky side to the, the films where you're in Jabba's palace or a cantina or Dex's diner where you're just like, I didn't even imagine this as part of the universe. They have big personalities that can kind of match your heroes. They can be a little more in the gray area. They can do some good things and some terrible yeah. things. Ezra started off on that track, you know. He was a pickpocket. He was a street thief on, on Lothal. If he hadn't met Kanan and Hera, he might have been a pirate like Hondo. But Hondo, after knowing Anakin and Obi-Wan, he's like, no, you're... You're a Jedi, because at heart you're a good person, yeah. is what he means. So it's always important with Hondo at the end to have that kind of moment of clarity where he's like, no, I'll tell you the truth. You're a Jedi, it's okay. And then he just goes off. All right, Chopper, today you're gonna be editing an episode of Recon. Here's your timeline, here are the clips. You just gotta put them in order, you gotta slap on some graphics, put on some music, and then you're basically done. Okay, sounds easy, right? Awesome. I'm gonna be over here catching 40 winks. See what you got here. What is that? Comic Sans? What? What is that? What is this? Chopper. You know what's great about the Lucasfilm Story Group's Pablo Hidalgo? He's always just hanging around the office, ready to answer your questions. Will he be answering yours this week? Let's find out. Hey, Pablo, got a second? Hey, hey, I got a question for you. Alessio Pasquale wants to know, how did Sabine learn where the AT-AT's weak spot was? Was it from SIBO's info or from learning at the Academy? Well, in cases like that, it's more often the case that it's from the Academy. Sabine is our weapons expert, and she became a weapons expert from her time in the Imperial Academy. Whenever she quotes the capacity or the capabilities of some piece of hardware, it's that background coming through. Fantastic. Have more questions about Brothers of the Broken Horn or anything you want to know about Star Wars Rebels? Tweet it to at Star Wars using the hashtag Rebels Recon and we'll answer what we can online. But before we go, check out this exclusive clip from our next episode, Wings of the Master. Let's see what this beast can do. Definitely not afraid of her.
Thanks for watching Rebels Recon. We'll be back with another brand new episode next week. But in the meantime, check out our episode guide for Brothers of the Broken Horn only on StarWars.com. What's up, everybody? This is Andy from StarWars.com here at Lucasfilm Headquarters. This week, I am not only taking you behind the scenes of our newest episode, Always To There Are, but I'll also take you to New York Comic Con for a panel with Sarah Michelle Gellar. This is Rebels Recon.